I am Sherard Griffin, and I'm going to be talking to you today about what we're doing with AI at Red Hat. We all know this. AI is everywhere. We've not seen any discrimination when it comes to industries. You look at telcos, you look at healthcare, you look at uh, automotive. AI is really embedded in itself in every single industry. And every single executive is starting to look at, well, how do I need to apply AI in my space? We've seen it as now the new competitive advantage. If, if, if CIOs, CTOs, if they're not thinking about AI, then they're inherently concerned about what their customers are going to think and what uh, the, what the uh, community is going to think as a whole. And uh, if you look at today where we are, uh, a lot of what we see is it's just ingrained in our everyday life. AI has become less about this commercial enterprise thing and it's actually starting to affect us. And what Matt just showed is Ansible Lightspeed is a great example of that. As a developer, it doesn't even matter if I'm just a developer doing my own code, my own projects, all the way through to something that's enterprise level, I have access to that. And we see the same thing with GitHub Copilot, we see it with Bing, ChatGPT. It is now ingrained in our culture. It's, it's, it's gone past just the research phase and really has been something that companies are building products around uh, and businesses are establishing themselves in this field as well. If you look at um, the growth of AI, generative AI foundation models, this is something where it's been shocking the adoption in enterprises. And so if you look at this, this slide, if you can see it, uh, at the top line it says, uh, employees experimenting at an individual level Almost 30% of organizations have at least some level of their employees playing around with generative AI, playing around with foundation models. Some of them are going through experimentation. They don't know how to use it, but they want to experiment faster and try to play around with technologies, all the way through to you know, one or more generative AI use cases in production. That's a, it's a little bit over 5%. And these numbers are just going to grow as more people become more familiar with generative AI, with foundation models and everything that's involved with it. It's, they're going to get more comfortable solving, solving their business problems with this technology. And at, a lot of what you saw with Matt and what I'm explaining here today is if you look at the foundation model process, what drives generative AI, what drives large language models, the interesting points about that, it's you look at foundation model as a whole, there's really four steps that we look at. The initial training of that model, you know, what does it take to actually build that foundation model? And then the fine tuning, the prompt tuning, there's various parts of that, whether you want to do fine tuning or prompt tuning, but how do you optimize that model based on new parameters, being able to take label data on a much smaller footprint and do something with that to, to really go from a generic foundation model to something that suits your needs? And then all the way through to the serving side. Now, a lot of what Matt talked about with Ansible Lightspeed is really more on the fine tuning, uh, sorry, on the prompt tuning and on the serving side of it, on the tuning and serving. And, and what I want to talk about today is what we're doing at Red Hat to be able to address the challenges that enterprises have doing those, those steps. And so we know AI as a whole is not easy to do. If it were easy, it would have hit mainstream a lot earlier than it has today. But what we found is over 50% of respondents in a survey uh, have struggled themselves to operationalize their models. How do you go from the training to actually serving that model into an application, something like Ansible Lightspeed? And it's not because the building of the model is, is the hardest part. That's actually not the case. It's everything that has to go on around it. Around it. Everything from feature extraction, data collection, data verification, uh, the serving infrastructure, the monitoring of it, all of these things have to happen in order for you to be able to do generative AI, large language models, uh, foundation mo deploy foundation models. Like these all take a lot more than just the models themselves. And so at Red Hat, we've really tuned into that specific problem. How do we help customers with our knowledge of infrastructure, with our knowledge of Kubernetes and OpenShift and everything we've built on top of from RHEL all the way through? You know, how can we help our customers through that problem? How do we help them not only understand how to leverage foundation models, but also get them out into production? And to me, this story really hits home because as we started talking to executives, uh, we heard them say things like, you know, we have to figure out a way to go from science experiments into something of value to the company. And this is where when you start to look at that bigger picture there, the complexities of operationalizing models, you'll start to understand that there's a lot more that has to happen and we're starting to focus on building our products in that space. 
Um, one of the things that uh, we started looking at is collaborating with IBM and, so, and other open source communities like Hugging Face and start to figure out what would it take for us to build a stack that allows customers to either build their own foundation models or train their own foundation models, uh, fine tune them, and get them out into production. And we've kind of bucketed this into two, two core areas that I'll speak up to. On the right side is what we have for more of the training and validation side of things. When you're trying to either create your own foundation model or tune a foundation model, it takes a substantial amount of infrastructure. This goes all the way through to, you know, if you're doing something with deep learning or neural networks, you need GPU acceleration, but you also need the ability to schedule those workloads to take advantage of it. Things like dis distributed workloads where you may have a cluster with 1,000 GPUs and you have to split that cl cluster with 20 other data scientists. Well, how do you do that in a way that allows you to leverage that? We built technology which is called OpenShift AI. If you haven't heard of it before, it layers right on top of OpenShift and it allows our customers to be able to do all the things they need to maximize their investment in Kubernetes, their investment in OpenShift, to be able to do generative AI, large language, you know, build large language models or tune them. And then on the right side of it, after you've done your tuning of your model, you've done your creation of your foundation model, what does it take to serve that up? That's a totally different challenge from training itself, where you may have a thousand GPUs and you need to uh, make that job run from two weeks to one day so you can iterate over that model faster and faster and optimize the model. On the inferencing side, it's all about low latency. And so when you saw Matt typing in and making a call out to Ansible Lightspeed to get a response back, I don't know, if, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't want to wait three, four minutes for a response to come back. It's a different set of challenges. And how do you have the right infrastructure that allows thousands uh, or, or hundreds of thousands of developers typing away, making calls into Ansible Lightspeed and getting a response back. That's been a big focus for us on that right side, being able to uh, work with uh, open source communities, work with IBM, work with others to figure out the right run times, the right serving engines, everything you need to be able to serve up your models at scale. And so when you start to look at the whole package of what we're doing, we're, we're kind of thinking of this as like LLM ops, where if you want to go into the large language models, generative AI, foundation models, and you don't know what tools you need, that's where we're, we've been focusing, and that's what OpenShift AI is really targeted for. And we start to look at the expansive part of what we're doing with OpenShift AI. I specifically talked about the, uh, the training and the serving stack, but there's a lot more that goes into it. One of the things here is you'll see highlighted in kind of a taupe color, I don't know what the color that is, but that's a lot of our partner integrations. Uh, OpenShift AI, we really try to look at the entire ecosystem. Everything from data ops all the way through to model monitoring and allow uh, and, and work with our partners to expose certain parts of the stack to make it easier for customers. So on the right side, on the data ops side of it, uh, sorry, on the left side, on the data ops side, work really closely with uh, a company called Starburst who they uh, have a technology that they use called Trino that allows you to get access, uh, federated access to data. And so from that perspective, a lot of customers, they don't have all of their data in a single place. And when you're starting to talk about foundation models, this could be petabytes of data, and it could be sprinkled in many different data stores, data lakes, even in hybrid cloud scenarios. And so working with that partner, Starburst, to be able to enable that, that's really big. We also work with WatsonX.data. Uh, you know, if you haven't been familiar with WatsonX, that's the new, part, that's the new product coming out of IBM that allows you to do generative AI in more of a curated way, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, some of the other capabilities is the model training side, being able to have things like a Jupyter Notebook environment for your data scientists, but then have plugins to that in working with RStudio, VS Code, and bridge that gap between developers and data scientists to be able to help deploy those models into production. And then we also have technologies like uh, pipelining, uh, data science pipelines that helps with the workflow side of things. Uh, we also work with uh, model registry and have things like uh, uh, conversational AI uh, runtimes. So all these things that help the data scientists and the applications get the uh, application developers get these models out into production. Uh, so if you look at what we're trying to focus on, it's really generative AI for the hybrid cloud. Um, you know, one of the big things that we want to focus on is being able to bring the workloads to the data. 
not bring the data to the workloads because it's very expensive to transfer data. And when you start to talk about the data needed to either generate foundation models or to fine tune, it's better to be able to push those workloads to where, you need, where the data resides. And so for us, we have this unifying platform that allows data scientists and application developers to work together. You saw that with Ansible Lightspeed. That was a really great collaboration of the data scientists with IBM Research, working on the IBM Code Assistant, with the application developers on the Ansible side, and bringing that together in OpenShift. That's what OpenShift allows you to do. And then being able to support the end-to-end -end workflow, the tuning all the way through to, uh, sorry, the training all the way through to the tuning, uh, the, mo the serving of it, and then the monitoring, the very important part of how do you know that the model is accurate and you're actually able to make improvements over time and continue to fine tune and, pr and prompt tune that model. Uh, you know, one of the key things that's great about OpenShift as a platform is the ability to handle massive workloads. You can do things like scale up your infrastructure based on demand and do that in an instant. You can do things like scale down to zero. Uh, we have capabilities that, you'll, that allow you to do A-B uh, AB testing on your models. You're just trying to see which model version is better. We do canary rollouts of your models as well. Like all of these technologies that you traditionally think of from an application perspective, uh, when you're building out an application, you want to do those A-B testing, you want to do canary rollouts, you want to do scale to zero to save on costs when you don't have any traffic coming in. We, allow, we, we provide that same capability for foundation models so that when you're building your applications, you can, you can optimize your resources and be able to scale out whenever you need to. Um, now, I've talked briefly about our collaboration with Watson and what we're doing with Watson X. Uh, it really is a very deep collaboration, and we've, saw, we saw, we've seen some tremendous uh, opportunities come out of this. Uh, and when you start to think about the relationship of OpenShift AI and what we've done with Watson X and the partners at IBM, it's really focusing around uh, enabling IBM to focus on, on what they do great, which is a curated set of models that will allow you to do things like IBM Code Assistant, and they're having more models coming out. But then also, uh, we want to provide the infrastructure that allows customers to bring their own models and help that get, uh, get, give them access to that in the Watson X tools. And then if you look at what Watson X does really well, and something that a lot of customers are excited about, is, it, is the auto ML type of capabilities. Let's say you're a citizen data scientist or you're a business user, and you don't know the intricacies of building and training your own model. They have a great set of tools that allow you to, to really get your, you know, dip your toe and get your feet wet uh, in, into this space without it being overwhelming. And so, you know, a lot of, going, a lot of it going on with uh, Auto AI, and they have things like Prompt Lab and Tuning Studio, uh, as well as some of the capabilities with the AutoML uh, uh, and, and the Watson Studio that they have. And so when you think about OpenShift AI and where that sits with Watson X, uh, it is a prerequisite. Anyone interested in Watson X has to deploy OpenShift AI to expand on the capabilities of the OpenShift platform, and then Watson X is layered on top of it. So you can really kind of see there is a really deep integration and a, and a, and a deep connection between the two. Uh, if you're that citizen, if you're that, uh, that, that DIY type of user where you don't want the auto AI capabilities or you want to go deeper into the stack, that's where a lot of users really enjoy uh, what OpenShift AI provides. We, I don't have to mention this slide much. Matt did an awesome job walking you through Ansible Lightspeed. But Ansible Lightspeed is built on top of OpenShift AI and, and, as well because it's also integrated with Watson X, uh, with Watson X's IBM Code Assistant. And so for this, you kind of see the layers of stack here. We have OpenShift, then OpenShift AI, and then Watson X with their Code Assistant uh, model running, and then you have Ansible Lightspeed on top of that. So it's a very, very nice clean stack that shows you the infrastructure all the way through to the application layer. We also have great, great partnerships with NVIDIA. Uh, we worked with them at the very early stages to be able to enable GPU access uh, for containers and be able to deploy containers that can leverage GPUs, both on the training side and on the inferencing side. And we've extended that over the past year to go deeper into the stack. So we uh, not only have uh, great capabilities that we provide on the OpenShift layer with NVIDIA Rapids, uh, we also have some great things that we do with the NVIDIA uh, Tensor RT 
And then going even on the inferencing and the serving side of things, we allow customers to take the NVIDIA Triton server, which is the inferencing server for models that they, they have that um, gives you a little bit more capabilities on the GPU side. And you can actually use that in the OpenShift AI uh, modeling ser uh, serving engine that we have. And of course, you know, as I spoke before, you look at the NVIDIA GPUs, you get access to that through the GPU operator. Another great partnership that's exposed through OpenShift AI is Intel. And Intel is somewhat similar to NVIDIA in terms of what we're focusing on. Uh, one of it is we have, we've done some great work with them on the AI analytics toolkit. That allows you to do some really, really interesting things uh, to, it's kind of, uh, you know, we, we, we see it here where it says like a drop-in accelerator, so if you don't have GPUs or if you're trying to get access to Intel GPUs, then that's a great toolkit for that. We also, uh, out of the box, OpenShift AI has capabilities and, and notebook images for OpenVINO. Uh, this is great if you, are, if you are focusing more on the CPU side of things in uh, some scenarios, let's say you're doing something with um, image detection or facial recognition and you don't have access to GPUs but you want to do some of those similar types of algorithms, then OpenVINO is excellent for that and it's, it's been a, a great way to kind of you know, work through some of those challenges where you don't quite have access to GPUs. Uh, I mentioned this before, Starburst, they're a really great partner of ours because it helps customers get access to the data and it's all integrated into OpenShift AI as well. Uh, if you have your data sprinkled through different data centers, maybe you have it uh, uh, different, um, different governance that you need on top of that, then you know, Starburst is a great uh, partner that allows you to get access to that. It gives you governing access of that data as well and it just lets you uh, move those workloads to where the data resides very easily. So just to kind of round things out, I want to just really follow up with the last little bit here, which is what our strategy is around generative AI and foundation models. You know, we're really working with the IBM research team. We're working with our partners like NVIDIA, like Intel, to really start to bring more capabilities to our customers to allow customers to do things like the prompt tuning, fine tuning, serving out those foundation models because it is not a simple thing. As I mentioned in the very early slides, there's a lot of complexity involved in that and we're, we're simplifying that complexity by giving you a stack that we ourselves are using for Ansible Lightspeed and, and that's being used for some other of our uh, serving uh, services that we've rolled out. Uh, we have an open source project called Open Data Hub. That's the upstream for OpenShift AI. Uh, that allows our customers to you know, take the very same open source approach you have with RHEL and with uh, Kubernetes with OpenShift. You know, if it's, it's, it's great to see that because now with everything moving so fast in the AI space, having that one place that we can go to for the open source part of this is really key for us to work with our partners, with our customers to accelerate time to market for some of these capabilities. Uh, the nice thing is, you know, we have the out-of-the-box bring-your-own model use cases that we solve for as well. Some of the customers have spent a lot of time building their own models, but they just need to operationalize that. That's totally fine. You can bring your own model, you can fine-tune your own model in this platform, you know, or you can build your own foundation model, and we support all of that. Uh, and then over time, uh, we're going to continue what we're looking at is extending on that light speed story. You, you saw the example of being able to use generative AI and use foundation models to be able to describe, uh, to, to create Ansible YAML. We're gonna extend that into more of our infrastructure and we're looking at opportunities to take that same type of approach where uh, you can have more generative AI, more foundation model capabilities ingrained in our own products. Um, so that's it for me. Uh, you know, I appreciate everyone's attention and thank you and uh, you know, hopefully you learned a little bit and I'll hand it off to the next person.